Hi, Daddy Gang. All right, I'm gonna get right into it. So I have read everything on the internet. I've read Twitter, I've read Instagram, I've read Snapchat, I have read Reddit, I have read um, the articles, I've listened to the podcasts, the radio stations, you've named it, I've read it, I've seen it all. And now I'm coming on here today to tell the full story, to tell my story. And this is basically a story that takes place over two years. So as you guys know, I love to talk. So what I've done here is I have essentially outlined the two years of this entire situation. And I've tried to break it down from the beginning to now. And I know that Dave did that on his, our podcast, his um, episode, but I think it's important for you guys to hear on my end and, and what was happening on Sophia and my end. So let's get right into it. The beginning. So the beginning of Call Her Daddy. So what happened was I was on unemployment checks. I didn't have a job. And my friend who had just started at a startup reached out to me and was like, hey, Alex, do you want to do a podcast? And I was like, what's a podcast? But sure, great. Can't wait to get into it. Like, don't have a job. Um, at the time, I was just vlogging and trying to make it on YouTube. So I bring Sophia along. I'm like, yep, we're going to do a show. No idea what it's going to be yet, but we created it and we get going. So we created four episodes and then Dave Portnoy slid into my DMs. I had known Dave throughout the industry. Um, no, not even the industry. I just knew him in social scenes of New York City. So we kind of like knew of each other. And then, so I went to Dave, went to Barstool alone by myself for a few meetings and they went great. Dave and I talked about, you know, coming um, with Call Her Daddy, me vlogging, um, and also just like coming as a personality and doing things at Barstool. And I was so excited. Couldn't be more excited. Great. Can't wait. Um, and I told him Call Her Daddy is Sophia and I, and he was like, great. Can't wait to meet her. Bring her along. Let's do the damn thing. So that's how the beginning of Call Her Daddy started. Now Barstool early days. So our original contract was a three year deal. We were going to make $75,000 each and we were going to have a three year contract and then the second year 85 and then the third year 100. Three months into our first year, we got raises during Christmas time. Um, then after the event at the Barstool Christmas party, um, Dave and Erica called me back in and they gave me a raise for editing and doing all the social media and doing all the marketing. I chose not to share this raise with Sophia and I chose to do that because Sophia made me feel uncomfortable that I did more work and to kind of help you guys understand that I would just be editing late night the show and I would take a snapchat post it be like daddy Yang episode coming soon and Sophia came to me and was like you know I don't feel comfortable and it makes me upset that you are posting those things because it makes um you look like you do more work than me and it doesn't look good on me um, we would go into meetings and people would be like, hey, like who edits the show? It's great. And Sophia would say, we do. So that was difficult for me because I, I take great pride in editing this show. And I think that it's important just to um, quickly, I don't want to get like too tacky, but I think it's important to quickly explain the Call Her Daddy show and how it's edited because it's not edited like any other podcast. When we first started, I had never heard of a podcast, but I was vlogging and I knew that our millennial generation, Gen Z, et cetera, we have a very short time span of attention. So we're like in five minutes, we're all bored. So the goal was to essentially edit the Call Her Daddy podcast like a vlog. And so what we've never told anyone is Sophia and I will, will record three hours worth of content and then I will edit it down to about an hour. I spend more time editing the show than we do writing and recording it. So essentially I have a second job. And 
To give you guys an idea, on a good day, the editing will take me about seven hours to 20 hours. It's a multi-day process usually. And I'm proud of it. I think it's an amazing idea. I think that the millennials obviously love the show and I think the editing is great and you never find a boring moment in the show. So I think I chose not to tell Sophia because of how uncomfortable she was publicly with people knowing I did more privately absolutely no issue obviously but publicly it was um an issue for her so i chose not to share with her that i got a raise for the extra work i did i would have been totally comfortable if sophia wanted to go in um say dave i've got this extra thing i do and i'm sure dave would have loved to give sophia a raise for the extra task or whatever she was bringing to the table so i think that i wanted to clear that up because i think that is a big part on the internet of everyone being like when was the raise and like when, why didn't Alex tell Sophia? And um, that was a personal decision I made. I did struggle with it for a while. I remember one week and I went home and I was like, mom, shout out my mom, psychologist, love you. But she was like, you, you've got a decision to make. I can't make the decision for you. And I struggled with it for a while, but I ended up deciding not to tell Sophia. All right, moving on to negotiation part one. Okay right before the end of our first year, this is when the negotiation started. So the podcast literally blew up. I mean, you guys all know it was like, whoa, like, holy shit. I, I mean, we were all confident in it. Sophie and I were confident, but we had no fucking idea what we were doing. Like, I mean, we did, but we had no idea how big it was going to get and how fast it was going to grow. So it was extremely exciting. And so we're coming to the end of our first year. And I want to be very clear because I think, you know, comments I've been reading on the internet, it's like, you know, why the fuck did they think that they could renegotiate? Like, whoa, like you guys are breaking contract by even trying to get more, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to be very clear that in our original contract, it stated that at the end of each year, we were able to renegotiate our compensation. So we were not in breach of contract for asking for more money, just putting that out there. Um, and also because Sophia and I had gotten raises, we were already making more our first year than we were contractually said to make our, for our salary for our second year. So at the least we had to renegotiate our salaries. So this is where Peter really comes into play. Sophia, and I allowed Peter to essentially take the reins and he was telling us all about industry standard. You guys, you are making way below industry standard. And we were like, what the fuck is industry standard? And he's like, industry standard. I still didn't understand like, what's the number? What is industry standard for a while? Like we never got an answer, but all we knew is we were making significantly less than industry standard. So Peter put together um, a document for us and he put together the term sheet that we were essentially gonna renegotiate with and send to Barstool. And I think it's important to clarify also, like at this time, Peter wasn't the only one telling us like, hey, you're getting really exploited by Barstool. I remember um, my, some friends I have in the NHL told me that when they were out partying with the guys that have a hockey podcast at Barstool, there was a lot of comments about how our contract is so pathetic and like, oh my God, those girls are getting fucked. Like it's so embarrassing. And so when you're hearing from certain people that you're getting fucked and then you're hearing from people that shove their credentials in your face 24 seven, like Harvard, HBO, and you girls are making less than industry standard. You start to be like, okay, we need to look at this like anyone would like, okay, what the fuck then? What is industry standard and what should we be making? So Peter puts together this entire term sheet and he has us hire a lawyer that he um, gave us two options and we picked one of his lawyers that he got for us and he puts together the term sheet. The term sheet, as you heard from Dave, is one of the craziest term sheets and it had all these outrageous asks. The one million, we wanted to be independent contractors, like it goes on and on and on. So we, I, I knew Sophie and I were both nervous to send it. We're like 1 million and we were told, yes, in the industry, this is how it goes. You go really high in negotiation and then they'll come and like meet us in the middle. 
clearly that didn't happen. So we sent it to Barstool and in a very roundabout way, Dave Portnoy essentially told us to go F ourselves in every single hole possible. And we were like, all right, all right, fuck. It was, it was awful. I mean, we were like, expe we were like so excited. We we're like, oh my God, like everyone's telling us like, this is the deal. And then we sent it to Dave and he was like, you're cute. You guys are really cute. So that was um, a humbling moment. And so that document essentially pissed Dave off so much because he was like, I don't even need to renegotiate with you guys. Like I own the IP. This is the fucking brand that I own. Like I don't really need to do anything. So after that, he essentially was like, you guys are not going to get the IP. I don't really, I'm not intending to do anything on that term sheet. It's ridiculous. And so that is where on the timeline, all negotiations stopped. Yes. So this is about four to five months into our second year now. Okay. And all negotiations stop. We continue to do the podcast and we are not talking to Barstool about renegotiating our contract. We are not talking to them at all. We just continue to do it. Contract is on hold. This is when Peter Nelson started shopping around the industry for deals for us. He was like, girls, I'm gonna put feelers out. I'm gonna you know, go talk to all my friends in the industry. I'm gonna get you girls the deal that you guys deserve, yada, yada, yada. And would like send us all these text updates about like, this is what they said about you. Like the, everyone loves you guys. This is great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. And it sounded um, great. I mean, I think at the time it sounded like our only option because Barstool was not really willing to negotiate with us. So then the rooftop meeting comes. We had offers in the industry and we were like, all right, let's go have one more conversation with Dave Portnoy. Sophia and I had different opinions on what this meeting meant. Um, after the fact, Sophia made it clear that she was more so going in as just like a courtesy meeting. I was kind of going in praying to fucking God that Dave would be in a really good mood and be like, I actually will give you the IP because everyone, the IP means call her daddy just because I know it's like a term in the industry and before podcasting, I had no fucking idea what that meant. So rooftop meeting, we contact Dave. It's at the very beginning of Corona. We walk to Dave's apartment. We go up onto the rooftop. I'm shitting bricks. We sit down. Dave explained the entire situation. He offers us what I saw as the world. He's like 500K, IP is yours. We get alcohol. We will raise the merch a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like trying to not poop my pants right on site. And I'm like, wow, like this is okay, Dave. Like, yeah, yeah. Sophia is being a little bit more combative, like going at him, asking more questions, et cetera. And then at the end of the day, he gave, he gave us the offer and we leave the rooftop. The minute we left that rooftop meeting is when the issue started with Sophia and I. We left that meeting and I was like ready. I was like trying to get, I'm like pressing the elevator, trying to get out of Dave's apartment as fast as fucking possible. I'm like about to scream this is exciting like we just he literally just offered us call our daddy who in the industry like i remember someone told us it was like the only people in the industry that have ever really gotten their ips and it was a huge battle was howard stern david letterman and now motherfucking call our daddy i'm like are we dreaming we get outside and i'm like holy fuck dude this is fucking amazing and i can tell sophia is not matching my level of excitement at all and i'm like and she's like, I personally don't think that that meeting changed anything. I still feel the same as when we went in. And I was like, oh, okay. And I will never forget this walk home because we were leaving Dave's apartment. And since it was Corona, we had to walk back to Tribeca like a mile. It was the most awkward walk of my life. And when have Sophia and I ever had an awkward walk, but we could just so tell like, oh, well, we both took that meeting very differently. Like this is, this is an issue. And, and we had a little bit of like a tiff conversation. She's like, I just don't get why like you're even entertaining it. And I was like, I don't really get why you're not entertaining it. So for like 
And this is how bad it was. I remember staring at my map. It was literally 0.4 miles left to go and we just did not speak the rest of the way. And we're both like furiously texting. I'm texting my family like, holy fuck. And she's probably texting her people like I'm upset at Alex or whatever she was texting. So the minute we left the rooftop, argument. Then this is the ghost period. I literally have on my timeline, ghost period. So Dave Portnoy talks about in the um, podcast, like all of a sudden I offer them the fucking deal and then I don't hear from them for days. And I'm going to explain the ghost period to you guys because it, this is exactly what I think is missing on the internet of everything I'm reading, of everything that everyone is wondering, like, why the fuck did you guys not get back to him? He literally offered you the deal of a lifetime. This ghost period is truly what I believe is the biggest piece of missing information. I want to preface this by saying that I wanted Call Her Daddy to remain a duo. I wanted Sophia to stay at Barcel with me and I wanted to do Call Her Daddy with Sophia so badly. 50-50, wasn't gonna ask for more money with the editing, wanted to do it 50-50. I wanted to shake Dave's hand right on the rooftop. After that meeting, I just lost my timeline. Okay, ghost period. After that meeting, Sophia made it clear to me that she didn't feel like anything changed and I felt like the world had changed. And so what happened was I started to appease some of Sophia's asks. She was like, you know, maybe I'll entertain it, but we need to go back to Dave and I wanna ask for a few more things. And because I wanted Sophia to come to Barstool with me, obviously so badly, and I wanted this deal, I was like, all right, I'm pretty sure he's going to literally tell us to go fuck ourselves, but let's give it a try. Let's give it a try, let's see how this goes. And if he tells us to go fuck ourselves, then I'm going to have to make a personal decision. But for now, I'm going to stand behind my partner and we can like ask for a few of her things, ask for a few of her asks. And I started to become this like, yes, woman. We would get on the phone with our lawyer talking about what Sophia wanted. And then I would be over here like, um, I'm good with the deal. But like, listen to Sophia, whatever she's going to ask for. Let's talk about it. I'm good with the deal. I'm good with the deal. And I started getting on the phone and I would literally, I wasn't like being a bitch, but I was just trying to make a point. Like our lawyer would be like, so Sophia, are you good with this point? And she would bring a list of all the things she wanted to change. And they'd be like, Alex, how do you feel? And I would be like, I'm good with the deal. I'm good with the deal. I'm good with the points. I'm good with the points. So at the end of the day, I wanted Sophia to be happy. I wanted her to take the bar stool deal, but I also didn't want to like force her into something that she didn't want. But at the end of the day, I really wanted her to take it with me. So this is where Dave talks about like the moving of the goalposts, the moving of the goalposts. Like all of a sudden it was like, we gave you this and now you guys want this. It got to the point of how much Sophia was wanting to ask for more. Every single time Dave and Erica would hit one of Sophia's numbers, not even my number, like Sophia's number. For example, on the alcohol, they were started at 5% and Sophia was like, I will not take this deal if we don't hit 20%. And I was like, 20%, all right, fuck us, but let's go for it. Barcel gives us 20%. Then another issue arises. Sophia wants more over here, over here, over here, over here. It was like whack-a-mole. It was like they would hit her point and it was literally, it was crazy because my numbers were lower and they kept hitting her her numbers and it would be like they hit this point on to the next on to the next on to that and it get it, it literally got exhausting like it got exhausting trying to appease all of Sophia's points and it got to the point where it turned it, it felt like it was um like sabotage like I'm like how much more can we ask for and I ended up asking Sophia to provide me a list of her points because it started to be like, now I'm starting to feel like half of these are just like made up points. Like the minute we get like our biggest points, a new one arises. Like I remember one of them was she was like, I really want to get um, paid if we do personal endorsements for swipe ups. And to compensate, I said, listen, Sophia, if you want to get paid extra and you're not going to do them if we don't get paid, I will do every single swipe up for the 12 months and you don't have to lift a finger. I will do every single one. Well, you're not advocating for the brand. Like it just started to get really bad because it got all about money. Finally, our lawyer was like, you two are so not on the same page. Alex is like ready to go for the deal. And Sophia, clearly you have things you want to adjust in the deal. And I cannot go back to Barstool until you two are on the same page. 
infamous two hour phone call. Okay. I could tell Sophia was upset. I could tell that when we were negotiating, she was extremely upset. In my opinion, she seemed very upset. And so she texted me one day and she said, can we go on, get on a phone call? And I said, absolutely, let's get on the phone call. This is what I call, and Sophia will know what I'm talking about, the infamous two hour phone call. Sophia and I got on this phone call and we started, we tried to be very civil for like the first 30 minutes because every time we were speaking about it, her saying we should leave, me saying we should stay, we would we could not speak for longer than seven minutes. And then, you know, when you're talking to someone that just doesn't see your point and you like wanna shake them, we both felt that way. So we get on the phone call and it's the same exact situation. She's trying to convince me why we should leave. I'm trying to convince her why we should stay. But this time it shifted because I made a point to let Sophia know that no longer for me, at the end of the call, I let her know, no longer for me was there the option of leaving. Barstool was the only deal now. I was no longer entertaining the idea of leaving. I took notes from this call we had on May 6th and I just wanna read you guys these notes because it was a two hour phone call and I don't think that I should sit here and explain the entire phone call, but May 6th. Sophia began the call by telling me she felt I was bulldozing her into the barstool deal. Sophia told me that she went into the rooftop meeting with Dave as more of a courtesy and to let Dave know that we were leaving and wanted to see if he would give us the IP to take with us. So like she was like, give us the IP and then maybe we can find a way to like link you into it, but like we're gonna go, so like hand us the IP. And she told me that, Alex, it feels like you went into the meeting with a different idea. And I said, yes, yeah, Sophia, I did go into the meeting with a different idea. I went in with an open mind to hear Dave's opinion and I ended up hearing him. This is something Sophia said to me on the call and I'm just, here we go. Sophia said, Alex, I hate this deal. What it comes down to is you don't want to leave and I don't want to stay. And I said, yes, that is what it's coming down to. So I asked Sophia, what is there, Sophia, to hate about this barstool deal? Why are you so willing to abandon the call her daddy brand to go start something new? And Sophia said, the IP, it is the most important thing, but it's not as important to me as it is to you, Alex. I get you think the IP is the end all be all, but I feel differently about that. So guys, to confirm the IP, that is call her daddy. Like if we leave, there's no more call her daddy. We can't refer to you guys as daddy gang in anymore. There's no I'm unwell. There's no gluck luck. There's no degrade me. There's no little bitch boys, like nothing. It's dead and we have to go come up with an entire new show and we can't use any of those terms. So on that call, essentially, as you can hear, we agreed that we valued the brand in a very different way. Then at the end of the call, I think this was one of the, it was like the beginning of what I call the sabotaging period. At the end of our phone call, Sophia made a comment to me that she had made on a call with our lawyer, but she hadn't gone into as much detail. So at the end of the call, we're super heated. And Sophia says to me, you know, if I'm going to take this deal, what happens to the IP if one of us wants to leave and gets fired, what happens to the IP? And I was like, Sophia, are you telling me that you're negotiating right now in bad faith and you are going to take this deal, try to get fired, leave me to do the heavy lifting for 12 months and sweep around and come back to pick up 50% of the IP when the term is over? And she started screaming, you're, you're mixing up my words. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm like, no, 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 Sophia. I'm literally just saying like, you continue to ask if one of us gets fired. Dave Portnoy doesn't fire anyone. Like, what are you getting at? And she had asked this question to our lawyer before and he was like very confused by it and didn't have an answer. So. This was a huge red flag to me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like now it's becoming like this paranoia 
kind of psychotic shit going on. And on our phone call too, she had mentioned, you know, I don't think that we're gonna, I have a feeling that we may not get the IP in the way we think. And she kept saying, what if Dave changes the passwords and says he loses the password to the RSS feed, which is like what has all of our episodes. And what if he says that our Instagram was hacked? And I'm like, I feel like that's not gonna happen. So this is where we were after that phone call. We got off the call and we both knew at that point we were on very different pages. I wanted the Barstool deal. She told me she didn't and she was upset and she felt like I was bulldozing her into a deal. And I don't think you should ever have to bulldoze someone into $500,000 and an IP. And also the brand that we built, Daddy Gang, our fan base was literally not hearing from us. We wanted to get an episode out and for some reason we couldn't move this process forward because deal points, we needed an extra 50%. We need an extra 5% here. We needed to shorten the term. And so it just kept going. Two days after this phone call, the first New York Post article dropped on this entire situation. And it was our leaked contracts from Barstool Sports. It was our first year contract, which actually wasn't even the final contract we ended up signing. But there are five people on this planet who have that initial contract. Me, Barstool, our lawyer, Sophia, my lawyer, Sophia Franklin, and Peter Nelson. Clearly releasing that contract was an intention to make Barstool look bad. Like, oh, they're underpaying the girl 75,000 because it didn't really have our bonus structure in there. So we can all assume, you can all assume, I assume you can have your assumptions of who would leak those contracts to make Barstool look bad and try to ruin the Barstool deal. And I started to be like, why am I feeling like there's a lot of sabotaging going on so that the deal is off the table and I'm forced to go start a new show? Like that's where it started, the firing comment. Then this New York Post article, it was getting like very kooky at this point. So the next point. I get a call from my lawyer at 1 a.m. in the morning. We're trying to still send points over to Barstool. We're like trying to get this thing over the finish line. And I get a call from my lawyer and he says, hi Alex, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Sophia has brought in her own agents from WME. So that's like a talent agency. And they have made changes to Sophia and your deal. So my deal, these agents that I've never met were adding in new points. And I said to our lawyer, wait, I, I've told you I'm good with the deal. Like I'm good to go with the deal. Oh, you know, yeah, like I'm just, we're just adding in these new points. Um, we're just gonna send them to you. At this point, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I get the term sheet sent to me of all their edits. I can't like speak the legal terms because I don't know them, but this document now and the edits looked pretty identical to the first crazy aggressive ask term sheet that Peter Nelson had drafted up for us. We were about to try to sign with Barstool and I get this document and to give you guys an idea, like. Sophia and them, from what I remember reading it, it was like they wanted to bring the, um, the term. So Dave had given us, brought it down to one year. They wanted it now to, Sophia wanted it to be six months. And I remember, I will never forget, I read the first line of the edit on the document and it literally said, the girls will get the IP at the end of the 12 months or also if they just terminate. So like Sophia and I could literally sign this deal and in five days be like, Thank you so much for the IP. They wanted, they were adding 20% to uh, merchandise. We had agreed with Barstool 15%. Sophia was adding 20%. Like I was reading this document and I'm like, no, this is, this is insanity. This is now tit for tat. You gave us 15, we want 20. You gave us a year, we want six months. And I was like, holy fucking shit. These people are never going to be fucking happy. This is all about money. Not one person on that side of the fence was concerned about getting an episode out. Not one person was focused on like, hey, how are the girls going to like reconnect and make sure that they're good to go for an episode? It was all about money. 
at this point, as much as I wanted Sophia to be a part of this journey with me and to continue and to take this deal with me, when I got this document, this was the exact moment I vividly remember making the decision to pick up the phone and call Dave Portnoy. Because in my mind, they had no idea yet that Sophia and I were not agreeing on points. So if somehow this document was going to be sent, Dave is going to be like, literally go fuck yourselves. Like, you get out of my face. And I would have been like, I was ready to take the deal on the rooftop. And if I, and if for some reason we weren't able to send the term sheet because I was going to disagree with all these terms, it was never going to get sent. And then we still would not have any more episodes probably for like six more months. So it, it got insane. It literally, like I'm, I'm getting upset about it because it's, it's insanity. It's literally like how much more can we get from Barstool? And that was like a huge point that Sophia kept making. They're desperate. They're desperate. Like, let's keep asking for more. And I was like, I'm happy with the deal. So I called Dave and I called Dave and I asked to meet with him individually. I went, sat down at his apartment, met Randolph. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I went and I sat down at his apartment and I told him, Dave, I want to take the deal. Sophia and I have individual contracts. I want to sign the deal that you offered me on the rooftop. After that moment, I continued to negotiate my own deal. I got my own representation. I got my own lawyers that Peter Nelson did not pick for me. I had control. I picked my own lawyers and we began to negotiate my deal. That's basically the end of the timeline. I I guess all I can say about this is it fucking sucks. Um, I mean, I know I've read like all the comments and I know people are mad at certain people, but I do know that this is also like a really shitty thing for the daddy gang. I lost a friend. You guys lost the duo that you were invested in the show. Um, and it fucking sucks. I think anyone on the internet, anyone watching this, anyone listening to the podcast has one, lost a friend. Everyone's lost a friend in their life. Or two, probably what hurts even more, losing your friend to a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it's literally the weirdest thing because when I saw that the person that I thought I was in business with had a posse of people that significantly, significantly affect her decision making, I had to make a decision for myself and my own career. And that's why I'm sitting here alone right now. I didn't have a boyfriend make my decisions. I didn't have an agency make my decisions. I had to make a decision for myself. I think at the end of the day, what it comes down to is I am very aware that this brand, the daddy gang, is bigger than Sophia and me. Much bigger. And I am so fucking excited to get the show back on the air, to continue to talk about sex and blowjobs and talk about shitty one night stands and the Cooper special and, and get into it. And I think that it fucking sucks because the excitement I have, I wish Sophia had had that day on Dave's rooftop. I'll see you fuckers on Wednesday.